Good afternoon. Um, I apologize, I can't speak Portuguese, but um, I hope that English would be um, acceptable for all of you. I can do my speech in French if you prefer, so just choose English or French, but I understand that perhaps is English, English would be better. So, um, dear Hugo, thank you. I have the feeling that you have said something very nice uh, about me when you, I mean, I didn't understand everything, but I had, I could feel that, uh, and, and thank you, thank you for, for those uh, words of introduction. Um, to start with, I would like to thank, of course, first Victor Koyas because you have been the spiritus movens, if I understand well, with a number of friends of this extraordinary initiative. Uh, or the organization today of uh, the first real forum of all heritage NGOs in Portugal. Uh, thank you for your invitation to be here and to speak at the end of this forum. And thank you, of course, to our moderator, to Hugo O'Neill, um, who convinced me uh, to come to Lisbon. I must say every invitation to come to Lisbon is, uh, is a good one, but some invitations are even more important than the others, so I really wanted to be here today. And thank you for this extraordinary stage. I must say that I have never been speaking in such an extraordinary architectural setup. It's a, quite a unique hall. You can be proud of it. There are such extraordinary gems of, of uh, uh, Europe's culture and Europe's cultural heritage in your country and it's great to see that you are all joining forces to um, ensure a better future uh, for, for, um, for this heritage. We have seen now some, some images that Hugo uh, has shown of, um, yeah, heritage is not such a good shape. I would say uh, there's a lot of sleeping beauties in your country and all of you are, uh, uh, in fact, your, 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 your mission is to give it a kiss of life and, and, give it, uh, and, and make it live again. Uh, indeed, I'm back uh, to Lisbon, and I think Hugo uh, has uh, recalled that fantastic congress in 2012 that Europa Nostra organized with Centro Nacional de Cultura in Lisbon. It was one of the most unforgettable congresses that we have, including the ceremony and the Geronimus in the, in, in, in the, in the cloister of the Geronimus. I think since then, uh, there is this very special relationship between our country representation, Centro Nacional de Cultura, and I'm always very emotional because I have uh, uh, really such friends, and then, and goes back to Helena Vaz da Silva, uh, Guillermo de Oliveira Martins, and now with Maria Colado, you are an extraordinary group of people uh, who are moving mountains, and, and it's really an honor for Europa Nostra to have you as our ambassadors and our representatives here. Um, and I think your words, Maria, um, at the beginning, your, your speech, really you managed to encapsulate all the important aspects of why, why it is important that we all mobilize for cultural heritage. So so thank you for being in us, and we have many more challenges to tackle together. Uh, we also have a special partnership, of course, with the Gulbenkian Foundation, who do not want to have Gulbenkian Foundation as a partner, but they are a, such a player, not only in this country, but in Europe and, and, and beyond. And in fact, I had an opportunity uh, last uh, Friday to attend also a very important, another, I would say, pioneering uh, initiative. Uh, it was uh, a gathering that we organized with the Gulbenkian Foundation when we brought together the private foundations. Here we are talking in particular about uh, associations, ONGs, but private foundations are also an extremely important player, and that is something that Europa Nostra wants to so sort of uh, rally uh, together at, at, at European level. And, um, and then, then, yeah, between what, what have I done between Friday and Monday? Uh, I have been enjoying an extraordinary hospitality of Hugo and Carmen O'Neill. Um, it was the most perfect preparation, I think, inspirational preparation for this uh, day to get day with you. And, uh, and I think it was a perfect sort of illustration what a beauty and what a value 
of a historical house, a historical home, which has a soul, which has a history, and which has the sort of the owners who are descendants of the uh, uh, of the of the of those who have made it home. And uh, in that weekend, I have not only been in Portugal, I have been in Ireland, I have been in Germany, I have been in Denmark with Hans Christian Andersen, I have been in Spain. All that to say that all those historical places are telling us the European story. In, and of course, many have uh, an even wider story than just the European. So um, all that, I think, was a perfect illustration of the message that, uh, Hugo, you have been passing about the importance also of the, of the, uh, of the, of the privately owned, family owned historical uh, heritage in this country and, of course, in, 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 in the whole of Europe. So um, uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak about Europe because we are in Portugal, but we are here in a country that has uh, uh, written such extraordinary pages of European uh, history and contributed to the European culture in such an extraordinary way. And uh, I loved when, uh, where is the person? I think you spoke about the slogan, Casa Nostra, Causa Nostra. Was it was that something? Was it you? Now that is exactly the philosophy I would say of, of, of our organization. We are sharing that Europe as our home and, and as in our cause that we have to defend. So bravo for this initiative. Um, Five years ago, in 2012, where we had our Congress, there was a small, there was an embryo, I would say, because at in our forum in Gulbenkian Foundation, there was a panel on, the, on, on heritage NGOs in Portugal. There we are five years later. You are all here together. You are sort of uniting, and I love your, the, the, where is that, the, here. You, I love your, um, the words that you have chosen. Unite, unir. Unir as ONG, unite the ONGs, and then our shared heritage, our shared heritage, and you even don't speak about Portuguese, you are calling it our shared heritage, which I find very much again in tune with the philosophy and action of, of Europa Nostra. Uh, as we have heard uh, this morning uh, from uh, the minister himself, the timing could not be better for this gathering because next year will be a historical year, will be, I really truly believe, it's not just sort of using pompous words, I really believe that uh, the 2018 is, will going to be a, a historical year for Europe. Uh, and, and it will, the success of that year will largely depend on us. It will not depend on institutions and on the governments. It will depend on the capacity of the civil society, of the communities, of the citizens to all somehow unite indeed for our shared heritage. So that slogan of sharing heritage, uh, having something in common, having a shared responsibility for its future, that will be at the heart of that year. And, and I'm saying about that because I have been one of those who have been fighting, who have been lobbying um, with all my heart and soul for this year. And I can tell you, uh, it didn't happen just overnight. I can tell you that all of the uh, institutions were telling us, no, it can't happen. Juncker has decided that there won't be any European year during this uh, commission. And I have all been telling them, but this one is or category. This one cannot be compared with any other at the moment when Europe is in such a um such a critical point of its and the whole European project in such a critical point of its uh, um, history. Uh, how can we not use our shared culture, our shared history, our shared heritage as something which brings us together? There are too many people, too many messages that divides us and we need a cohesive and positive message. And we have that message. We can make that message uh, with, the, uh, with the cause that we are sharing, the cause of cultural heritage. And that's uh, somehow uh, we managed. We managed with many, many people who work together, uh, governments, uh, members of the European Parliament, and civil society, and we got the year. And now we have to make something um, of it. Um, 
I would like, uh, before I say a few more uh, things, I think you are all interested to hear, and I think it's important for your future plans that I tell you more about um, sort of the European year. But I'm also conscious that not everybody in this room uh, knows really what Europa Nostra is all about. Uh, so um, I thought a very, very quick, uh, um, quick, I will make a little like uh, um, invitation voyage, um, who we are, what we do, uh, and, um, and basically afterwards tell you more about, is there something here? No, I'm going, where am I? Ah, but why is it here? No, that works. Um, so just a brief, a brief introduction and then tell you how we are doing basically what you are doing here in Portugal, how we are doing that at European level uh, since we have created five years ago a European Heritage Alliance 3.3. And, uh, and then tell you a few things about the report, Cultural Heritage Counts for Europe. That was a report I hope that perhaps some of you have heard about that report tell you more about that formidable challenge which is the year and sort of call you all uh, to join a campaign that we have launched recently and that is basically hashtag heritage for Europe. Um, so we are 53 years old, 63, Paris, uh, the time when Europe was in the making, everybody wanted, it was, it was positive, Europe was a positive thing. So we have been created very much with the support of the Council of Europe as the voice of civil society. Today we have uh, um, an office, that's, my, that's where I'm spending my time when I'm not uh, elsewhere or in Portugal, uh, the headquarters in The Hague um, and uh, the office uh, in, in Brussels. And that office we also um, share the office with the, the European Historic Houses, Hugo, as you know, uh, one of the European networks that are um, lobbying for heritage in Brussels. Um, we are also having a famous, famous president. We say that we are the voice of cultural heritage and we have the, one of the most famous, if not the most famous voice, Maestro Placido Domingo, as our president. Uh, so it is important. It's important to have the champions, important to have the professionals, but also some famous people famous champions who help us to promote our cause. Um, uh, of course, this, what we have done those 50 years, the raison d'etre was to build that dialogue, to be the voice of civil society, in particular to most important institution. Maria, you have mentioned already UNESCO, important conventions, Council of Europe, of course, for many years that was the only institutions dealing with cultural heritage before European Union discovered as well that culture and cultural heritage has something to do with the whole process of European integration. Um, series of conventions and last but not least the famous Faro Convention. I know how much uh, Portugal and in particularly also Centro Nacional de Cultura and Guillermo de Oliveira Martins contributed to that Faro Convention and that convention speaks so much of the importance of heritage communities and, heri uh, and citizens and civil society and of, of that new in fact what the minister called uh, uh, a change of paradigm, the new governance models for heritage uh, in Europe and European Union. And I will in particularly now, I think nowadays, that's our focus of all our work. So that's why I will be talking more about the European Union. Uh, we are a network, we have member, I think I'm greeting all the member organizations from Portugal here present. If somebody else uh, would like to join, perhaps, uh, um, the doors are wide open. So we have member organizations, these are heritage NGOs, non-profit and non-governmental. And then we have anybody else, public authorities or profit-making bodies can join as associate organization and also individuals. Now we have 966. So. Uh, Help us, help us to have at least 1,000 uh, join, join, join the, 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 the network, which is much more than network, it's a movement, it's a family after all. But all together, when you put all these, uh, the membership of all those organizations, it's more than 5 million people who are 
somehow actively supporting some kind of heritage organization uh, all over Europe, and we also have some membership outside of Europe. Portugal, I said, our country representation, for the moment, just three member organizations, but I have the feeling that there are many, many more candidates that we would like to welcome. Uh, Associação Portuguesa das Casas Antigas, Associação Portuguesa dos Amigos do Castelos, um, a European network based here, European Federation of Tourist Guide Association, and Fundação das Casas de Fronteira e La Lorna. And as an associate organization, guess which municipality? Setubal. And uh, Hugo O'Neill has certainly helped promoting Europa Nostra in um, Setubal. Now, I've already spoken about lobbying, and I will do something more, but how, uh, we also have an instrument, two very important instruments for our lobbying, and I think you know about at least one of it, and this is our awards. So celebrating excellence through awards is really one of our flagship program, and the other side of the same method is campaigning for endangered heritage. Um, now, uh, I mentioned that I will uh, say a, a word about that project, Cultural Heritage Counts for Europe. And I really invite you to spread the word. We have the, 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 the report is available uh, online. We have several language versions uh, of the executive summary, not yet the Portuguese, but perhaps you, you, you speak all languages so you don't need it, but why not? Perhaps you can also uh, uh, consider translating it into Portuguese and our president presenting that report to uh, President Juncker. So that was one of our sort of uh, important moments that we got that high on that um, pyramid in, in, in Brussels. And what is the main message of that report? The main message is when we are measuring the value and the impact of cultural heritage, we cannot possibly only speak about its economic value. For, for many years, it was all the time we had to prove that it's important for an economy. But the message is that the impact is so much more complex and so much more intertwined. And it's as, it, we, when we measure it, we have to measure the impact on the economic field, on the social field, on the cultural cultural field, but the environmental field, and in the heart of all this wonderful colorful flower is basically what we call sustainable development. It was, it was mentioned, many speakers were talking about that we are all fighting basically for the recognition of heritage as a strategic resource for sustainable development. And we still, the fight is still a big one ahead of us because it's hard, it's, it's far from having been recognized by everybody. Um, European Heritage Alliance, I think also it's important for you to know, 3.3. Uh, uh, so we, uh, probably like you, uh, realize that we are, if one of our weaknesses is that we are fragmented. So we realize that there are many, 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 many European networks supporting in one or the other way cultural heritage, but then we are, each of its network alone is small. But if you put all those networks together, then suddenly, wow, you have a huge force. And that's what we have done. We have created initiative, a European Heritage Alliance. Uh, and now we started with about a dozen, and now we have 42 European networks. It's informal. It, they don't pay any fees. Europa Nostra is coordinating, but when we have a, uh, something to say to the political leadership, then we say it all together. And that makes it a huge force. And why 3.3? Because it's an important article of the Lisbon Treaty um, that somehow got into the treaty. Probably other people were sleeping and didn't see that there was an article saying that the aim of the European Union is to preserve our cultural heritage and to promote cultural diversity. And we have been the one who have been very much putting a spotlight of that article, using it uh, massively, and now everybody speaks about, I mean everybody, at least the ones, at least we used it also in, in our lobbying for the year. So in, indeed, when you have important um, documents, when you have important things, some people said, oh, so what, it's just an article, it's just a line in a declaration. But if we are using it properly, Properly, and then combining with our action on the ground, then certainly, you know, we can. We can indeed move the mountains. Uh, so we will um, have now the European Historic Houses uh, Network is one of it, but there are many, many more. Here you have the logos of all those uh, networks, network of... Um, 
of um, archaeologists, uh, um, tourism, new cities, uh, museum, religious heritage, industrial heritage, uh, um, uh, businesses, companies specialized, ARPA uh, specialized in, uh, um, in heritage, rural heritage, history educators, basically all, all, all those various uh, fields which are um, sort of directly or sometimes indirectly connected are part of that sort of lobbying uh, alliance for heritage in Europe. The awards, I hope you have all heard about the awards because this country um, uh, is, has been a proud winner of a number of our awards. Uh, on the 5th of April, only a few days ago, five days ago, we have published the new, uh, the announcements of the new winners. There they are in Portugal. I mean, we have more than Portuguese winners, but uh, um, for the sake, I hope you have read in the newspapers, the Clerigos Church and Tower in Porto, uh, one of the uh, winners in the category conservation, and then uh, in the category education, training, awareness raising, an advanced master in structural analysis, of monuments and historical construction. I think the lady who spoke from ICOMOS Portugal mentioned when she showed all the importance of the, of the master courses and one of it, especially because of its uh, uh, in Minho, uh, in, uh, in, in Gimaraes also, uh, very important that it was also a European, fully European cooperation with several universities and that's something that we very much want to promote. Um, vote. You can vote now, the jury has spoken, but now you can vote for a public choice award. And this is our way to also sort of make a message that the voice of everybody matters and that there is something like a, uh, le, le prix du coeur uh, and that you can go to that vote.europanostra.org and, and you have to vote for three and three from different countries. So it's not allowed to vote only for the, all, only for the projects from your country. That is our little contribution to promoting that sense of togetherness in the organization. Um, and we will announce the Grand Prix winners at our Congress in Turku in Finland. Uh, the other side of the medal, I said, so we are promoting excellence, quality. The other side of the medal is to um, campaign and to help uh, most of the time our member organizations, NGOs working on the ground uh, uh, through our seven most endangered uh, program. We have heard that uh, uh, your nomination was in the short list and I hope that it has helped at least uh, a little bit but uh, here we have two places that got onto the list of the seven most endangered from Portugal. One is the monastery and church of Jesus in Setubal and um, it has certainly helped because as you know the at least the first phase of the transformation of the monastery into a museum has been accomplished and now it, the project has to continue and the rest is the, 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 the next one in 2014, the Carillons of Mafra National Palace. I think we are all hoping that our president Placido Domingo will come to ring the bell when it is restored um, uh, and we also have the 300th anniversary of the Mafra Palace and it ought to be celebrated uh, Europe-wide, not only only um, in Portugal. Uh, yeah, just one, one wonderful illustration. We have been talking a lot about uh, uh, tourism pressure, I think, I understand, and, and sort of unsuitable and unsustainable development. Just these pictures uh, of these huge, and every day they become bigger, uh, cruisers that are uh, sort of uh, assaulting uh, Venice, assaulting uh, Dubrovnik, World Heritage City of Dubrovnik, and many other cities. It's just one uh, illustration of many, many, and many. You have, you have also illustrated uh, today during the forum um, cases where sort of some developments which somehow you say doesn't make sense, and still it is happening. And this is probably one of the biggest, biggest challenge for all of us to, to join forces and to sort of somehow get the attention of the policymakers at all levels and say something simply uh, not everything is for sale and certainly not for short-term uh, profit. Um, 
uh, applications, by the way, for the next uh, list, uh, list 2018, are open, so anybody, uh, member organizations can apply by the 30th of June 2017. So, um, if some of you think that uh, there is a nomination for the next year's list, uh, please, um, you have the time to prepare the nomination. Year, year. You all want to hear a little bit more about the European uh, Year of Cultural Heritage and that slogan, which in fact uh, uh, the civil society with some other organization we, we have launched, sharing heritage, but we have also added sharing values. And because at the time when we started lobbying, Europe was not in such a bad shape as it is now, politically speaking. And that is why we felt that we have to add this whole discourse, which is uh, uh, something that we are sharing the values, sharing the story, sharing the history, and that's why the political significance of that year has just gone up. Um, what are we going to do uh, in that year? So the year will be a very complex, uh, in a complex way organized. Uh, there will be things organized at the level of the European Union institutions, and we will do, I can promise you, that we will be your voice. Uh, whenever we can, we are going to try to sort of put the civil society into these various activities and, and convince them that, that they have to be important uh, um, uh, protagonists. Uh, then we will have the national coordinators. I think you in Portugal, you're the lucky ones to have Guillermo de Oliveira Martins uh, to be the national coordinator, one of the, the, such a prominent personality and so convinced that civil society has to be uh, involved fully in the year. The, the national coordinators will meet among them and the first meeting is very soon, 25th of April, and only a few days later, the stakeholders and we, together with a number of European heritage networks, will be meeting with uh, uh, the European um, Commission to talk about the main emphasis and the main messages. And I can tell you that also what I have, all the messages that I've heard today, uh, I will be able to use as my sort of some kind of motivation and some arguments that I can bring back to, to, to Brussels and, uh, um, and, and convey to the Commission. I can already tell you it's not, uh, the things is still in the, in, in the making, but uh, there are sort of four big themes that some kind of flagship, that the horizontal theme that the European Commission and uh, together with all of us wants to promote, and I think it fits very well with what was discussed today. One is engagement in a broader sense. The other one is indeed uh, this value. Uh, value of heritage and, and also very much uh, sort of promoting quality for the new uses of historical buildings. So the whole issue of adaptive reuse of heritage because it can be done in a very good way and it can be done in a very bad way and some of these examples have been shown today. So our joint fight is to say yes we need the investments, we need the real estate developers but we need them to do it in line with the best practices and that's something that we have to convey. The protection, the whole issue of once again skills, the, pro the professionalization and the high quality standards will be very much uh, on, the, on, on um, one of the main issues endangered heritage risk as well. And last but not least, everything which is innovation, but not only technical innovation, but social innovation, which involves, in fact, the, so the something like called heritage for all, the promoting citizen participation. For the moment, it's everywhere in the documents, but it's still on the ground. The situation, as you very well know, is different. So we have to sort of convince that we have the bridge between what is on, said on many, in many European and national documents and what is happening um, on the ground. Uh, we will um, also um, have a summit, not a Congress, our ambition goes up. We want to organize a European Heritage Summit, but the difference, that summit will be organized by the civil society and not by the institutions. We will invite the institutions, but we will be in charge. And so we would invite everybody, and I hope that as many people from Portugal would also be, and that will be in Berlin uh, in June, uh, uh, in June uh, next, uh, next year. And, um, and, so, uh, uh, and we will be celebrating the 50th anniversary of the seven most endangered programs, so spotlight of heritage in danger will obviously be an important one, in addition to having a very, very special edition of our awards. 
Um, and to end, I want to tell you basically, you know, we, you have been listening in the, in the uh, in, in television and you have been reading in the news, there was the celebration of the Treaty of Rome in Brussels on the 25th of March. And uh, we have, on the day before that, um, uh, that event, we have launched um, uh, a statement and basically we said, um, you know, uh, you always say you want to do big on big things and small on small things. And you know what? We have good news for you. Culture is a big thing, so do big on big things on culture. And that was the message that we sent conveyed to all the um, decision makers. We have been before lobbying a lot to get heritage into the uh, declaration, Rome declaration. They all said, no, 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 it can't be done. And yes, we have it. We have one line in the Rome Declaration which says that the Union is uh, committing itself to a union which preserves our cultural heritage and promotes cultural diversity. Again, we have a line and we can then sort of uh, uh, question our leaders when they afterwards do uh, something which is uh, in opposition to what they have committed themselves. And then you can see I was even in Rome, I was marching uh, for Europe in Rome, we were the only cultural organization organization in Rome, we felt that we have to also uh, carry the flag of culture when they were all talking about, about Europe and we had that, uh, that, that uh, um, bandiera, Europa Nostra is Europa Vostra because all what our heritage is your heritage as well and we want the institutions to in fact to listen to our voice. And this was the day after, uh, uh, I, the day after the signature of the, of the, um, of the declaration. Uh, I was at the same place. It was the same place where they were all there gathered. And there I found this. I thought it was so, so symbolic to find a group of children learning about this beautiful fresco in the same hall when all those politicians, all those protocol, all the policemen were gone. There they were, they are the sort of youth, they are the custodians uh, of our heritage in the future and this is for them that we have to continue our work. So I, I just leave you with that final uh, slide which I find very, very symbolic for our work and thank you for uh, listening to me. Perhaps I was a little bit too long but uh, I had so much thing to tell you. Thank you. Muito bem. Thank you very much, Sneska.